This is my daughter's health summary. It shows all of her current diagnosis that she has. She was diagnosed with an intellectual disability to see back in 2014, along with selective mutism, a generalized anxiety disorder, and they just recently put prediabetes, abnormal weight gain, and a BMI of 95 to 99, so she's obese. Now that you see the diagnosis, let's take a look at the medications that she's currently taking. Because I've already pulled this list up. She's on albuterol for her asthma. They have her on a contraceptive, a contraceptive. And she, at one time, she had a lot of allergies. She suffered from allergies in the summer. They are in search, search lane. They actually prescribed that for her due to a social anxiety. So she was taking that. Another medication that's due for her, you know, congestion and allergies. And so what I did notice here that she's on eripiprazole, which is a generic for Abilify. And she was prescribed this medication back in July of 2022. I was not told that she was given this medication. So, and she's on Risperidin. That's another medication that she's taking. It doesn't say when she was prescribed this medication and she's also on Qtiapin. So she's taken all these different medications and I've already looked up these medications, but I'm going to go ahead and pull up the uses for these medications right here. So you can see. It shows here the eripiprazole, which is a generic for Abilify, is used alone or together with other medicines to treat mental conditions such as bipolar 1 disorder, manic depressive illness, major depressive disorder, and schizophrenia. Oh, it is also used in children to treat irritability associated with autistic disorder and Tourette's syndrome. So I'm going to go here and take a look. So it's an important warning for people who have depression. See, they say my daughter has anxiety and depression. They have her taken sertraline, and Zol which is generic for Zoloft. So I'm just going to go ahead and read this. It says, a small number of children, teenagers, and young adults up to 24 years of age who took medications for depression during clinical studies became suicidal, thinking about harming or killing oneself or planning or trying to do so. Children, teenagers, and young adults who take antidepressants to treat depression or other mental illnesses may be more likely to become suicidal than children, teenagers, and young adults who do not take antidepressants to treat these conditions. However, Experts are not sure about how great this risk is and how much it should be considered in deciding whether a child or teenager should take an antidepressant. Children younger than 18 years of age should not normally take aripiprazole to treat depression, but in some cases a doctor may decide that aripiprazole is the best medication to treat a child's condition. You should know that your mental health may change in unexpected ways when you take aripiprazole or other antidepressants, even if you are an adult over age 24, you may become suicidal, especially at the beginning of your treatment. And at any time that your doses increase or decrease, you, your family, or your caregivers should call your doctor right away. If you experience any of the following symptoms, new or worsening depression, thinking about harming or killing yourself, or planning or trying to do so, extreme worry, agitation, panic attacks, difficulty, falling asleep or staying asleep, aggressive behavior, irritability, acting without thinking, severe restlessness and mania, frenzied, abnormally excited mood, or be sure that your family or caregiver knows which symptoms may be serious so that they can call the doctor if you're unable to see treatment on your own. So as you can see from this, that a lot of the children who are taking this, uh, this is, of course, under the age of 24, my daughter's 18. Uh, they can have, you know, aggressive behavior, suicidal thoughts, you know, changes in their moods and all these different things. And so my daughter, without my knowledge, she was basically prescribed this medication and began taking it back in July, as you could see from uh, her medications and her treatment, her chart, it showed that she started taking this uh, aripiprazole back in July of 2022. And when my daughter had the altercation with her foster parent back in, in August of 2022, they stated that, you know, her disruption and her behavior stemmed from coming from the visits. And so they ended up ceasing my daughter's visits. And, you know, my thought is this. That's why I asked, how are you certain that the behavior was a result of the visits? Because, you know, my daughter's on all this different medication. Like I, I said here, uh, it shows that she was taking uh, aripiprazole. And then it shows that she is taking other medications here. Let me look that up. Not only was my daughter taking aripiprazole, but she saw on her chart that they had prescribed her something called risperidin, which is used here, it says here, is used to treat schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, or irritability associated with autistic disorder. This medicine should not be used to treat behavioral problems in older adults who have dementia. So I'm just going to take a look at this because... This 
risperidone is what they were prescribing my daughter as well. She's taking all these different medications, which I didn't even know anything about this. This wasn't even told to me. So it says it's used to treat the symptoms of schizophrenia, a mental illness that causes disturbed or unusual thinking. So, you know, it's my belief that they're trying to say that my daughter has schizophrenia. However, in her diagnosis and her chart doesn't say that she has schizophrenia. It just says she has a social anxiety and intellectual disability. So why would she be taking medication for schizophrenia? Where is that coming from? So it just shows here. Loss of interest, strange and inappropriate behaviors, mania, depression. Now, my daughter's already taken a search lane for depression. That's why I highly find it unlikely that she would be taking both for depression. We're not certain. But the thing is, they never told me she was taking this. This is one thing they have not told me. They say that they're transparent, but I wouldn't have known any of this. I, I didn't know. No one told me the only medication I knew of and approved of was the social anxiety medicine. We had a meeting back in February. No, it was in March of 2020, about a month and a half after my daughter was taken out of the house, along with her brother. They We had a meeting, and they came together, all of them, during the staffing meeting, and asked, would it be okay to place my daughter on anxiety medicine because they felt it would help her? And at the time, they had said she had an anxiety disorder. So I had given approval for the anxiety and medicine, which they had started giving her sertraline, which was a generic for Zola. And so here I'm looking at this respiratin, which is, it says it's used to treat behavior problems such as aggression, self-injury, sudden mood changes in teenagers and children. It says respiratin is in a class of medications called atypical antipsychotics. So could it be that all these different medications that's being introduced to my daughter could cause her to be acting a certain way, especially if, you know, there were no diagnosis. I don't know who prescribed this for her. It doesn't say. And if her therapist is prescribing this, why is she prescribing that? What does she diagnose my daughter with? Her spirit may cause children to gain more weight than expected. Hmm. I don't know how long my daughter was taking this. It doesn't say it in her chart how long she was given this medication. It doesn't even say when she started taking her medication. So she took the Aripiprazole back in July of 2022 is when they gave that to her. And the Respiridin, it doesn't say. It does not say when she started taking the Respiridin. And she's also taking something called uh, cutiapin, and it's used along or together with other medicines to treat bipolar disorder, depression, manic episodes, and schizophrenia. Like I said, they're trying to say my daughter has schizophrenia. Once again, you know, here's the warnings. It's the children under 24 who took this had, you know, suicide thoughts, thoughts of harming themselves. You know, um, those who are taking this with other antidepressants in order to, pre to, to treat depression may become suicidal. Children younger than 10 years. And so all these things happen. It's like it says here that you should call the doctor right away if you experience any of these problems. And my daughter did have mood swings, like you see. Um, in the previous video I posted where she talked about how, you know, out of nowhere, you know, my daughter just changed her, her mood swings changed all of a sudden. She got into this altercation with her foster parent. And then there was another instance that occurred not long ago, probably last month, where my uh, daughter had contacted me again. And she was crying and hysterical on the FaceTime, telling me that, you know, her foster parent got on the phone told me that she was throwing dishes, but she could not get, you know, there was no audio on that video, but I did post it. And so all this stuff is happening, you know, you're prescribing my daughter all this medication. And who, who, who treated her with schizophrenia? Because as I go through her medical history, you know, they just say she has anxiety. What doctor did this? Was this a different hospital? And this has been history, of course, through since she was very small, probably about 10 years old. It shows, it tracks her history that she's diagnosed with intellectual disability back in 2014, selective mutism, general, generalized anxiety disorder. So if they're trying to say my daughter has schizophrenia, 
you know, I, I don't see that diagnosis here. And if whoever's prescribed it, they need to explain why they prescribed that for, why is she taking all these different medications, medications that I wasn't even notified about and would have known, wouldn't have known if I hadn't been able to access the chart after they, you know, sent me information and registration information to sign up to use to look at the chart and monitor my daughter's medical history. I don't know if you can read this, but this, this is the SAR that they have that they sent me, and it was approved as of August of 2022, but this is the case plan. See, it says case review approved August 2022. It says my daughter here has a diagnosis of depression and anxiety and is on medication. So if she just has depression and anxiety, why all these different variations of medication that are mainly used to treat schizophrenia? It says that she is receiving mental health services from life care therapist, Alina Phillips. I talked a lot about her. She yeah, you know, was the one when we originally wanted to have the meetings, she was stopping my daughter from having family therapy with me. And I had questioned that, why is it okay for me to have family therapy with my son, but you guys were not allowing family therapy with my daughter. And this Elena Phillips kept saying at that time that it wasn't best because my daughter had to work out a lot of issues and she wasn't ready and she didn't want to disrupt her progress and, and cause her. How is, if there's an issue that you all claim if there's an issue between a mother and daughter, which we never really had any issues, they state that, oh, I, my daughter had these issues, and well, then when you wanna work on them with family therapy, isn't that the whole purpose, you know, of, of taking the kids out of the home and, and working on the problems with the family if there was ever any problems? See, the thing is, like I said here, look at this first page, and this is, I'm quite sure that Elena Phillips, I don't know for certain, but I'm quite sure if she's taking a Bilify and all these schizophrenia medicines, I'm quite sure it's coming from the therapist, but I don't know. So don't quote me on that. But anyway, someone prescribed them. Let's look here. It says here, the custody. So custody and placement will be maintained. Cheris has not been able to be successfully reunified. She has, however, thrived since coming to the agency. So if she's thrived, why do you all say she has all these behavior issues? Why are you putting her on medication? Why, are you, why is she taking all these different medications if she's been thriving and everything's going well? And then you want to actually blame it on me and say it's because of the visits. It had nothing to do with the visits. When my daughter comes to see me, she's fine. If anything, she wanted to go home. And you didn't like the fact that she wanted to go home. But let's keep looking at this, what they said here. They said she has thrived since coming into the agency care. Even though she now has diabetes, she's now overweight and obese. But that's, I guess that's, that's thriving, right? She has reported concerns about my ongoing talk about witchcraft and sorcery. So bingo, that's what this really is about. That's why they're trying to say that I have schizophrenia. They're trying to say my daughter has schizophrenia because we indicated, I didn't indicate that anyone was being possessed by anything. I never said that there was anything that possessed us. I said that I had a former boss that had been sexually assaulting us. I said those things. I said that people were using sorcery and witchcraft. Does sorcery and witchcraft not exist? It's in the Bible. Are you gonna say it doesn't exist? There are many people, ex-Satanists have came out, witches have talked about, you know, curses, putting curses on people, have exposed witchcraft. You're saying it doesn't exist? There are people who have come forth and talk about putting spells. They have, like I said, they have groups, you know, dedicated to talking about witchcraft, but you want to say that I am a schizophrenic based off the fact that I have ongoing talk about witchcraft. That's what it all stem from. They don't want you teaching your kids. They want to interrupt and disrupt us talking to our children and teaching us about these things. These things are a part of uh, Christian religion. Those who are walking in the Holy Spirit, those who actually accept all forms of the Bible would know that in the Bible it talks about, you know, spiritual warfare. And they're going to try and take the Bible. These are Antichrist spirits. They don't want to talk about this stuff. And when you teach your kids this stuff, they want to get involved in it. It says here that my daughter has... here and notice in the case plan as you can see back on that video you saw that my daughter was prescribed abilify back in july of 2022 right but it doesn't state that here it shows that she's currently on zola for 100 milligrams and that she has pro air that she's taking for her asthma and prednisone that's all it says here and that she's receiving mental health services from jessica I don't know, 
a behavior specialist, Jessica, they didn't put her last name, whoever Jessica is, I don't know her, but these are the people who are involved in her mental health that it states here, Elena Phillips and Jessica, from a specialist from Ohio Mentor. So I wanna to get to the bottom of it. I wanna to go to my, what they put in here about me. Let's see, mother has a reported diagnosis of adjustment disorder. That's that's what they said, that's correct. But did they state that this was diagnosed with after my children were taken out of the home? Mother has a reported diagnosis of adjustment disorder with behavioral issues in addition to the diagnosis of schizophrenia, anxiety, and depression. Okay, so here we go. If you're gonna say someone has a diagnosis of schizophrenia, you're gonna have to back up proof of where you got this diagnosis. And you're gonna to have to show that diagnosis. That's a part of my right. When you're gonna sit here and allege that I have a mental illness and, 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 and give a false diagnosis, because all of the people who I've spoken to, all of the therapists that I've seen, has a, uh, the only uh, uh, diagnosis that I have was of adjustment disorder. When they said that I had a diagnosis of schizophrenia, they said that that came when I had my first uh, Diagnosis, I had my first evaluation they'd ever given me, and this was given to me back in May. It was around May of 2020, after months after they already taken my kids from the, from the house, months after they already stated I had a mental illness which required me to have my kids taken from me. And so I kept asking them, I says, well, you're gonna take my kids, you can give me a mental health evaluation. So they had me go to the court, and finally they had me take a mental health evaluation. They said they were behind and the reason why they couldn't schedule me right away because of COVID, during that time COVID had just started. So I had a mental health evaluation done from the court and they never gave me the results of that diagnosis. That's the thing we're talking about to this day. No one ever gave me the diagnosis of this, this diagnosis from the court. I asked them over and over to give it to me. I went to the court. They told me they couldn't release it to me. They gave it to my caseworker. I had to give it to my caseworker. I went to my caseworker. She said she had asked her supervisor. They don't give it to me. So you still have not given it to me. Even in court, no one ever talked about it. They never stated, you know, where they got this diagnosis. So you're basically lying and falsely uh, diagnosing me with something and saying that I don't, slandering and saying that I have a diagnosis that I don't have just to suit and fit, you know, your reasoning behind taking my kids in the first place. And this is the stuff, this is the cover-up, this is the things that they do based off of my talk. You can't say someone's schizophrenic based off of their talk of witchcraft and sorcery, which exists. And they never said there was an entity, but there are demon spirits. Demons exist. That's, okay, it's all in the Bible. There are plenty of Christians, true Christians, who will tell you that demons exist. They might not experience these things, but like I said, these things first happened when me and my children were, were being assaulted by the kingdom of darkness. So they're trying to say my daughter has schizophrenia now because... You know, she said the things that are happened. And, you know, this is, a, like I said, it's a cover-up. Tell me how that's not a cover-up. So let's look at the, 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 the plan review. And this was done back in January of 2022. It says, permanency goal is to return the children. Well, that was the goal for my son, to return him back. They want to return. They said that it was reunification, but notice they always state they state for my daughter, the permanency goal is to be placed in a permanent living arrangement. Basically, PPLA, where I, they have not terminated my parental rights, but they're just keeping her away from me. And I always asked and questioned this: Why? Why is it okay to send my son home? I want both my kids home. You took them out the house together. Why return my son, but don't return my daughter? And my son still hasn't been returned. Well, they returned him, and then something happened where they had to take him back. But the thing is, look at the, read between the lines. Please read between the lines. Okay. So it says in the past, Ms. Ross has failed to ensure her children were in school on a daily basis and failed to meet any educational needs. Hmm. So they really, it says here that the agency does not have permanent custody. It says that my daughter expressed not wanting to be adopted, which is true. She, she didn't want to be there. 
She expressed wanting to maintain the connection with her family, but not wanting to return full time. Well, here's the thing. I don't know exactly what my daughter said. I know what she told me, but I know they have been manipulating her. My daughter would tell me how they can tell her, oh, they're gonna give her her own apartment. They're gonna pay for her to go to school. And in order for her to have those things, they would have to have this permanent, this PPLA thing. That's what they told her. So, you know, of course my daughter is thinking that this is something that's good, but she also stated she wanted to be with her family. And I asked them, why couldn't you provide these services? Why does she have to be split up from her family? So basically, they manipulated my daughter and stated to her that in order for her to have her own place, she would have to, you know, agree to this PPLA. But when they talked to my daughter, when it was time for her to go to court, my daughter doesn't really understand this stuff. My daughter is, is intellectually disabled. And if she doesn't have anyone who can properly advocate her, advocate to her what's going on, you know, that she will be separated from your family, she doesn't know this, you're just telling her this. And then they would give her, uh, reward her with things and, and make her feel guilty if she says she wants to go home, talking about, oh, she only wants to go home because of the cat. You know, if my daughter did not want to be in the house with us, I wouldn't, you know, of course I would be saddened about it, but she could have her right. But the thing is, my daughter has stated numerous times that she wants to come home and they're covering this up. They keep saying she does not want to go home. So she's currently in a foster home. They say she has refused to re reunify with me due to my mental health functioning. Wow. So my daughter will state that, really? My daughter doesn't even speak that way. And my daughter, my, I've never had a mental health decline. If anything, we talked about witchcraft. I told my kids about this. And the only need to talk about this is because the kingdom of darkness was coming up against us spiritually. Who was causing my daughter all the attacks when she was going to school? Who made her sick? Was it me who made her ill? My daughter was going back and forth to the hospital because she couldn't keep down water. I posted a video where she was vomiting. My son had repeated headaches. He was being bullied in school. There was all kinds of things happening. Who caused all those things? See, there were spiritual attacks going forward because my kids were knowing the truth and I was teaching them about witchcraft, which would not have happened and occurred had they not been harassed and assaulting this family. But they want to say that I have a mental illness to, to cover this up. So it says that my daughter, her daughter, my daughter's therapist has been Elena Phillips all this time. And that since she has her on Zoloft, so she must have put her on this other medication. And there it talks about our magistrate who we've had, Stephen Miles. Here we go. Let's look at this again. Cherish enjoys the weekend visitations with her family, but remains adamant that she does not want to return full time. So if she enjoys her visits, why take them away? Hmm.